everybody. Thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk, where you get great interviews from great interviewees, so sometimes a comedic touch. Today, I have somebody who's actually on tour opening for the one and only Ingve J. Malmsteen, not to confuse him with the other Ingve Malmsteens that play guitar and are uh, virtuosos themselves. How are you doing, Kurt? Good. I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me, Ernest. Awesome. So um, you're in the middle of, uh, well, you just started the tour. Um, did you have a show last night? Yeah, we uh, last night we played the Tally Ho in Leesburg, uh, Virginia, and uh, tonight uh, we're having an off night in Norwalk, and tomorrow night we play the Wall Street Theater in Norwalk, Connecticut. Wow. Um, before we get back into uh, more of that stuff, I'm sure people are aware of you if they're aware of, um, you know, the famous Jeff Tate in Queensryche. You've done some work with him. You've got an EP out currently. Um Take me into uh, one of the songs that I've listened to that I really like, uh, Burnt Together, um, that you and Jeff um, worked on. Well, he he uh, he was in the uh, in the video, and uh, he also sang on it. But how did you uh, get to know Jeff, Jeff Tate? Yeah, yeah my uh, management team, Andy Gould and Paul Gargano. Um, Paul Gargano is a big fan of Queensryche, and he's friends with the Tates, and he had the idea to reach out to the, to Jeff um, and his family and that we had them come down to uh, LA and meet with us because we knew our first uh, debut album, Work Hard, Rock Hard, was getting ready to drop and we wanted to do a collab with someone. Didn't really know what song yet per se, but they flew down and uh, we met with them and uh, I had picked Burn together because uh, I thought it was kind of a good blend of his style, my style, to where we could show, I, I could showcase my style of vocal versus Jeff's and mm. the, the anthemic tone of the song, you know, it's kind of got that rock, power rock yeah. feel to it. And uh, he agreed to do it, man. And we went to Chris Lord Algy's studio, who's my producer, and uh, cut the vocals, same place I do for all of my stuff with Chris. And uh, we agreed on a tour and shooting the video. And yeah. next thing you know, we're friends and uh, I'm out on the road with Jeff and shooting a music video with him. So it's very surreal. Yeah, and um, you, well, you, well, I know I grew up listening to, you know, Warning and Rage for Order and all things like stuff. So um, I met Jeff as well. And he, he is a very humble guy, but um, for him to um, have uh, you open for him for, I think, 40-some shows, shows how much, um, well, what am I looking for, how much trust he has in you. So, obviously, um, you're up and coming. Yeah, it, it was very nice to have uh, someone, you know, like Jeff Tate, you know, the guy from MTV, in front of a symphony, silent lucidity on TV, and you're like, uh -huh. now I'm performing and, and opening up for him, and we're friends, and... It's kind of like he took me under his wing and, and did what probably some folks did for him back in the day. And he believed in me. So, yeah, it was very surreal. And Jet City Woman was another hit. Like, um, you're, you're saying Silent Lucidity um, just because the masses, like, those songs went mainstream. But when yeah. I was listening to um, uh, Queensryche, I was deep into Rage for Order. And, you know, yeah. my first... Uh, my first understanding of a concept album was actually Operation Minecraft, which was, it still is one of my favorite all-time albums of all, of, of, and that's what he's been doing for um, a lot of his shows, is doing the, um, the Operation Minecraft uh, straight through. Yeah, yeah, and he, he did Rage for Order on that tour. Oh, uh, wow. Empire, and uh, it, it was that all in full, he played the whole album back, front to back. Insane. So, Go ahead. No, I'm that it was it was his thirtieth anniversary of some of his classic stuff and uh, mm -hmm. to uh, open up for, for him uh, and uh, to be around and he's such a great person and so diverse and so good at what he does and has so many other interests even outside music. He's, he's a very unique individual and a very good man. So well, like I said, for him to um, agree to uh, have you open for him smart people keep good people around so it uh showcasing your talent man and that video i gotta tell you um it, it brings me back to um you know almost the day back when videos were kind of uh 
shot on location instead of being shot from a computer and uh, yeah. you, you did it in the desert and i'm going to leave a link below in the description box when i upload this uh interview oh thank uh, you thank people you people got to check that out because it's just cool where you guys are walking in the desert and there's a, there's a cockpit and uh, i don't yeah. know there's probably a bunch of homeless people that are living in it and they just left before you guys got there to shoot well, yeah, I don't know, man, because when we got there, I mean, we literally, uh, it was so hot, yeah. and I, we, we do a take, and, it, you know, I'm, you, even though you're shooting a video, you still have to perform and everything properly to the song, and Jeff's belting, you know, like only Jeff can, and I'm belting like I do, and then, it, you know, in between takes, you got to go get some fresh air, the car air conditioner, if that's even fresh air, just because you can't breathe. Yeah, and it was, it was incredible. Freon. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And our director Paul Boyd had a vision for all for our video and likes to tell a tale. And he's known. Remember Shania Twain and all those killer videos she put out back in the '90s when she really launched. That was yeah. my director for this video. That's my creative partner in movies. And yeah, stuff. We've, we've got more than just snowballs up here in Canada, Kurt. We've got Phil X, your guitar player. We've yeah. got Shania Twain and uh, yeah. We got a few uh, up here, but um, speaking of my other guitar player, Michael Bassos, is from Toronto too, and grew up with Phil. That's how yeah. they knew it. Could. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So um, you're touring right now, Thing Bay. How many shows um, are on this uh, run? I believe uh, there's twenty five, twenty six right in there. There's only been one that there's been an issue with that uh, oh, really? won't happen. So I think it's like twenty six shows. Okay, and they're all in the in the Midwest or South? No, that we start. We're up here in the East right now, but we're going all over the country. We're going to cross the country out to California, then cross back to Florida, and end down in Florida on June fifth. Yeah, I think that's where where uh, he's based out of. I think. Yeah, we end up in Fort Lauderdale. So, oh. so I've I've got all the tour dates posted on KurtDimer dot com. So you yeah. Can be We'll put those links up as well. I mean, that would be um, awesome. So the attendance um, has been good, I'm sure. I mean, Ingve is still a virtuoso. He's uh, what's it? Parabellum is his current album. Yes, yes. And, uh, and that's so, the Parabellum tour. And uh, yeah, we've had great shows. We've had great crowds. People are really, really digging the vibe of the you know the differences in the bands even the two openers before us and then Ingbe comes out and closes the show like only Ingbe can and it's been a very good experience wow that that, that is awesome so you have another uh, single that's set to be released uh, when when are you going to release that um we release a new single called hero it actually comes out tomorrow on may 6th, 6th and uh, i'm very stoked for that it's uh you know going to be really big we've played it a couple nights now on tour and gotten phenomenal responses from the crowd so that will drop tomorrow night and then i've got another special song i wrote that is really cool that i know the whole world's gonna dig that's coming out father's day called my dad oh wow so it, you know it sounds like a personal story i i just assume yes okay well that yeah my, my father passed in 2016 and Wow. The irony of it all is he was my hero. So I've got hero dropping tomorrow. And then on Father's Day, we'll drop my dad, who was my hero. And wow. hopefully touch a lot of lives with these two songs because uh, they come from the heart, you know. Well, and that's that's so true. There's a lot of music these days that um, are not personal. It's just out there to get clicks and likes. But um, right. the ones that actually um, have that special meaning end up getting the clicks and the likes just naturally yes so do you write and, uh, most most of the songs um in uh, in your band or um is it a collaboration between you and brian and and phil and no it's it's it, how it happens is i write the lyrics and i can right. write them at any time we could hang up now something might come into my head and i'll write it and i'll go with it um, it could be in the middle of the night. It could be after a few beers. You just never know. Mm -hmm. And then once I write and get that thought out of my brain and tell that that tale that I, or that story or what I want the listener to hear, I send it to Phil and Chris Lord Algae. And uh, they put sprinkle all their magic on it. I give them a vibe and a voice memo. Maybe if I want it to slam or if I want it to be more pull back a little on it. 
but it all starts with the lyric. Then it goes to Phil X and Chris Lord Algae. And the next thing you know, we've got another tune and we've probably got 30 to 40 of them now that uh, are just waiting to be put out for the world. We're just trying to do be very strategic about it. And we're still writing every day. You know, we're never going to stop. So, right. Um, is there any chance of uh, in the next little while? I know just politically things are unique this last couple of years around the world for touring. Um, you, the United States um, was talking to somebody not to uh, just to actually call him James, a uh, Canadian guitar player. And he's been down in uh, California with, with Buddy Guy and stuff. And he made a good point. He said the Americans have been touring for about a year and the rest of the world's kind of slowly catching up. Is there any possible Canadian dates um, in the future? I would, uh, I would love to uh, be up in Canada, and yes, I know there will be. I just don't know exactly yet when or what tour that would be. Okay. Um, but we have a lot of people asking when we're going to come to Canada, which I'm very grateful for, and I can't wait to. So my management's working on that. Um, we, we've got a, a new booking agent and that's uh, going to be uh, taking good care of us. So I hope to know some dates for Canada here very shortly. So it's not that we don't want to be in Canada. It just hasn't happened yet. No, I told, we, we totally understand. Um, and your management uh, is Paul Gargano? Uh, yeah, Paul Gargano and Andy Gould. Andy oh. Gould is who's, oh. who helped Rob Zombie do what yeah. he did. Rob and I have a lot of similarities. We have our own unique style of rock and we yeah. do horror movies. So, Right on. Um, speaking of Paul Gargano, is it the same Paul Gargano that's uh, with the Stephen Piercy team? Yes, he manages Stephen Piercy, yes. All right. Well, you need to give him a shout tomorrow because uh, me and Paul have been going back and forth for uh, getting an interview with Stephen. And uh, he's replied. And he just said, you know, just uh, Ernest, just going to wait until uh, Stephen's got something to release. So you're going to give him firsthand knowledge of what a great time you had. You had no difficulties in this oh. interview. <laughs> <laughs> there you go again with that. <laughs> yeah, we we're talking it, earlier, and um, so, no, I'll put I'll put in a good word for you, Ernest, and tell because I well, I'm sure we'll be talking tonight or tomorrow at the latest with the release coming out. So, in yeah. fact, I got I got the I'm on the other line. I'll call you back earlier, and I still am waiting. <laughs> okay, yeah, busy, busy. Well, you're so busy, like you had your show last night. You have the night off, and then you're playing tomorrow. Um, when you're doing your um, opening set uh, right before. Um, Ingve comes on. Um, how many songs are you guys um, putting out? Oh, we uh, we did about. We're doing eight. Eight. That's eight that's... tunes. Yeah, we're doing eight tunes. We're doing about a forty-minute set. Uh, one night we had to cut a, uh, at a Union Theater. We had to cut one song, and we did seven. But yeah, we're we're uh, doing eight. We might even do nine. It just depends on the night and the feel you know, of the room and how long we have, because it can all fluctuate depending on how loading goes. But so yeah. far, it's been a good solid eight every night. But it sounds like the the the, the whole show is about three hours. You said there's two guy uh, two bands opening up before you. Yes, and, Yngwie, and I know Engve doesn't come on and play a song and leave. <laughs> He'll be no, up there no, until no. Uh, the, the power goes out. Yeah, no, he's going about an hour and a half, and we're going about 40 minutes, and the opening bands are going around 20, 30 minutes. So. Wow, that's, that's amazing. And it's been going pretty smooth, considering that, you know, that many bands and the theaters and the, the venues have been great. Now. Um, before I let you go, um, I obviously, um, you know, I mean, the, I don't know if Ron uh, Bumblefoot um, hasn't played with uh, any one person. Every time I talk to somebody, yeah, Ron was with me. I did this with Bob. Yeah. But it's like he can't say no. But you, you have this similar kind of the the long goatee, and there's a Canadian drummer in the band, the Killer Dwarfs, Daryl Miller. He's got the same thing. So I'll put a couple pictures up beside uh, uh, me when I put this interview up. But who would your favorite Canadian band be if you had to name one, past, present, or? Well, I already can, I can name that very quickly. I've I, my favorite band from Canada is the Tragically Hip. Oh, okay, the late George <laughs> Downey. Okay, right on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was major influence on me. Used to go see him, and I thought Gord just right. He he was a poet. Yeah. And he just he he 
filled my brain with so many great ideas and his music just touched me and the tragically hip i've been a big fan for a long time he he has that kind of a style that's is is just unique to him um vis-a-vis -vis, uh, mick jagger or uh, axel rose i mean you can't copy those guys and, and gord is the same way the way he sang the way his neck bobbed and um, yeah, I think yeah. my favorite song was nautical disaster just yeah, mine was uh, probably 50 Mission Cap. Yes. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah you know, or uh, Blow It High, Blow It High Doe, I think it was. Or yep. We shot a movie once, my hometown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And just his style, and he had his own unique thing. And, and I, I thought when I saw them perform, I'd go out of my way to see them when they were in the States, and I'd be like, I can be true to myself like Gord is and have my own voice where it's hard for people to sing like me if you're not a deep voice guy or you don't know how to talk or can sing or I've got my own style like like Gord did. So he was very influential on me, letting me know I could really do this, you know, because we're both poets. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's what I was uh, relating to with Nautical Disaster. You could just read the lyrics without even hearing the music behind it. And you can, it's just a great story. But then the way the boys put the music to it, it just, it's just like yeah. watching a, 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 a movie. And it's just yeah. happening around you. And it was just, just a, it was a beautiful song. But speaking of your voice, it is extremely deep. It was, is there, were you born... <laughs> down very down south and then did you have any kind of a country route in you or no well i was i was born in uh, cincinnati ohio and uh but my my father got transferred all the time he was in the oil business with golf and chevron okay. and every time he'd move up and do a new job he'd go kurt and leanne that was my sister it was just four of us and he go we're moving again and we had to move and you know i probably moved i've moved 11 times before i graduated high school but i spent six years in houston from uh fifth grade till halfway through high school so maybe oh. i got something from texas yeah but, that's what i would or say. maybe just living all over in these different areas but my dad was a baritone in the church choir and okay. uh, my, my sister had a very powerful operatic voice and was really a, a great singer she could have been on the voice or anything but i've lost my dad and my sister and they're both with me every night when i play and i talk to them and we go on stage and i represent because of the three of us nobody ever would have thought it would have been me who ended up on stage in front of all these people so right here i am in honoring their memory and you have a uh, a very uh honoring song dropping on father's day Yep. I, my dad, I wrote um, like two in the morning a couple years ago on my back porch on my deck and having a couple beers. And I just I was having a moment. And every lyric you hear in that song is what came out of my brain within about a 15 minute period during that little surreal time. And I, I think he was with me. And there it is. And it's about to come out. And it's going to blow you away, man. It's a killer tune. So that, that's awesome. Um, before I let you go, um, well, what I'll do is I'll definitely leave links and everything in the description bar. I'll try to get this uh, interview up in the next, uh, I'd say, five or six days, uh, Kurt. It's, it's been a pleasure. And like I said, um, I'm going to leave a link to that, uh, definitely the, the, um, that song uh, with featuring Jeff Tate, just a powerful you, video. Bro. And um, before I forget, uh, what's, uh, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Uh well, that would be subscribe. All right. Do as Kurt Dimer says and subscribe to the channel so you get some <laughs> more great interviews with great interviewees. Um, I had a pleasure, man. And um, Ernest, so did I, man. And we look forward to seeing you here up in Canada. And if we can't see you up here in Canada in the, in the near future, um, actually, I live in on a border city with uh, Michigan. And uh, you come oh, to okay. Michigan, I'll, uh, I'll hit you up over there. Well, let's definitely get together and keep in touch, and uh, let's we'll, let's do one of these one time, and, with, and you'll have a different backdrop, and I'll be in my bar in my studio. That's that would be a good night. I, I don't know if I want to change that backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, you take say care. Hello to, say hello to your wife for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my <laughs> wife. Yeah, right. Okay, take care, man. <laughs>